For several years, the Saudi leadership touted an ambitious plan to build a futuristic green city in the middle of the desert. Their project, Dab Neom, comes with a price tag of $1 trillion. At the center of this mega project, which will cover an area larger than Kuwait, will be a skyscraper called The Line. Construction has reportedly begun on what will be the largest man-made structure ever if completed. Stretching 170 kilometers and standing 500 meters, this linear city will house 9 million people and have no roads. Instead, residents will be able to walk wherever they need and travel from end to end in as little as 20 minutes on a high-speed train. Located in Saudi Arabia's northwest near the Red Sea, the building is expected to run on renewable energy and vertical farms to feed its millions of residents. Although details are scarce, the project is being pushed heavily by Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, whose 2030 vision project looks to transform Saudi Arabia's oil-driven economy to one centered on technology and tourism. So is this trillion-dollar linear city more fantasy than the future? And for more on this Saudi mega project, I'm joined by Taha Arvas, who is an adjunct professor at Boazic University here in Istanbul. And Karol Yanas, urban policy expert from the Institute of Urban and Regional Development in Krakow, Poland. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So, Karol, just how grand is this project if it ever gets uh, completed? I mean, will it surpass nearly every man-made project we have seen throughout the history? Uh, well, indeed, the project is uh, is huge. It's it's so complex. And well, frankly speaking, when first I I read I heard about this project, uh, the 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 world which came to me was utopia, right? The uh, utopian like project. Uh, and I must uh, well, actually, I would like start with something positive, maybe. So. Uh, what I really like is the idea of the compact city uh, in this project, the spatial concentration that you know allows for high energy efficiency, that reduces need for commuting, protect natural areas from being built, invested. Yeah, it's um, so. Uh, it's been said that the city itself, the because the the new project is something bigger, right? That's a, that's a vision for the entire development of the entire. Uh, region, but uh, the city itself, the line, will occupy only 5% of the entire region and uh, it's uh, supposed to be inhabited by, by 9 million yes. inhabitants, right? So, uh, and it would, uh, but it would uh, cover only 30, 34 square kilometers, which stands for just 2% of conventional city. So, you know, basically it's going to be not, uh, not only linear, but also vertical city. and. Well, that raises some some concerns. Yes, we're going to uh, get on those concerns and the possible yeah. hurdles or challenges that this project will likely to uh, face in the future. But Taha, what is the um, driving force behind this project? Aside from creating a futuristic city, what is Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman trying to do here? I mean, what is it he trying to change? Right. This is more than just an infrastructure project. Like I think what you're alluding to is um, this is his first major uh, initiative that's now almost six years old. Um, this was announced in 2017. So uh, it was meant to be really, I mean, uh, the, the reality, is it's, it, he's trying to make another Dubai. Let's be honest here. Mm -hmm. um, this is the, when you hear the line, I, I know of no other city in the world, frankly, other than Dubai, which is uh, constructed in a line, Sheikh Zayed Road in, uh, in Dubai's straight line that's, you know, approximately as long as this is. So it's very close to that. Um, it's a very ambitious project. I think what he, what he was trying to do was both uh, increase uh, employment, uh, by, you know, decrease unemployment, increase employment for Saudis, um, especially for the youth. Um, and it was, he had to come up with a grand project to do that. And I think this was that. Mm -hmm. um, whether, whether or not it gets completed, whether or not uh, it's close to what he wanted, isn't really that important uh, for him and for Saudi Arabia. It's just that he has to get youth unemployment, especially uh, off the ground. It's, it, it's, a, it's a stagnant problem. Saudi Arabia took a lot of steps to counter that by uh, this term called, called Saudization, getting rid of expats and, and employing local Saudis to do the jobs of expats. 
But these are all issues. Uh, these are systemic problems that Saudi Arabia has. Yes. And this project is supposed to be uh, a gateway to help solve them. So, Carl, uh, many mega projects across the Middle East have hit um, hurdles in their constructions, like cities like Dubai seeing their own futuristic uh, projects hit roadblocks, whether it be the environmental issues or financing. So what could derail this project? So, um, well, everything can, <laughs> can, can, can be, it's, it's, everything here is uh, really uh, challenging, starting from the very construction of the, um, of the city. Uh, so it, itself, yeah, it, it's unprecedented challenge, but even bigger challenge uh, from my point of view would be to, uh, to implement the entire uh, economic social ecosystem. You know, one thing is to build the so-called hardware of the city, right? Buildings, public spaces, facilities. Um, I know parks, entire technological, very advanced technological systems. Uh, but uh, completely different thing is to make it um, functioning, to, to, to create a livable, vibrant city. So, uh, you know, the former, the, the, the urban hardware, that can be tackled somehow. We can imagine that uh, with, with such a sea of petrodollars and, yes. and talented planners uh, and, uh, well, that, that, that could be solved somehow, probably. Uh, but it is not so easy to engineer urban life, right? And that, that cannot be so easily created or, or bought simply, right? So, um, yeah, and, you know, most of the cities we know, actually, and among them, them, those most successful ones, these are actually cities which were developed organically as a result of many overlapping processes, drivers, decisions. They have history, um, identity. In fact, they are open processes, mm -hmm. you know, whereas... This uh, artificial cities, cities uh, created on demand as a result of administrative decisions, uh, or what's even worse, as an implementation of some architectural um, uh, utopias or ideologies, they usually fail. And uh, well, Mazda City, for example, in U UAE, that that could be a recent example. But we can learn uh, also yes. from the entire history of modernism in Europe, in US. Yes, yeah, so Tama, the first phase of the line is expected to cost uh, $319 billion, half of it, which will come from the Kingdom's Sovereign Wealth Fund. But where will the rest come from? Right, so foreign direct investment is what uh, Saudi Arabia was hoping for uh, when it started the project. Uh, to date, I think it's got very little uh, in the project. But the, the good news for Saudi Arabia is since 2017, um, and, and I'll jump in to help answer Carol, the question you posed, Carol, what, what could derail the project? And the answer is uh, lower uh, oil uh, revenue. But now we're in this period of a booming oil environment. So Saudi Arabia is filling its coffers with, with petrodollars. So um, yes, it's supposed to come up with 200, 300 billion from investment, but it might not need that. If, we, if, this, uh, if this rate of increase um, in oil revenue uh, continues the way it is, um, I, I think it's gonna it's gonna go ahead with this project anyway. Mm. Uh, I think it uh, it it, it, it uh, the the crown prince has no choice. I think it would be a monumental failure um, for them to step back from it. I I don't think it's the political will there is for him to say okay it didn't work out we didn't get the investment I'm not going to do it. I think at so, with with some respect it has to go forward. Yeah. So it'll it'll. Yeah. So um, if succeeds, uh, Carol, uh, within a half century, half a century, would this be a revolutionary move in terms of urban living, design and architecture? I mean, what do urban planners like yourself think about it? Um, well, if succeeded, then then probably yes. And I think, it, well, it's... Um... On the one hand, it's really a breathtaking uh, initiative, and and uh, it's uh, well, it's it's a dream, right? It's a it's a future city. It's a place where you can test uh, every cutting edge technology uh, which are developed at the moment. Um, but um, well, it was also it's been also said that it's going to be the most sustainable uh, city in the world, and. Um, 
when um, you know, I, I can't get rid of an impression that uh, something something simply doesn't add up here. That there is mm -hmm. you know a big contradiction between the very idea of building such a huge, uh, gigantic structures in the middle of a desert in extremely difficult climate conditions without any actually justified demand, in fact, right? Uh, so I'm afraid that it has absolutely nothing to do with uh, like the green oriented development on uh, and not only because uh, it's a bit weird to to uh, develop green oriented city uh, finance it from oil extraction but uh, it's also um you know the, uh, the the green development sustainable urban development it's about uh, reuse redevelop revitalize maybe even enlarge existing structures right uh, but with some reference to, for example, observed uh, demographic trends yes. uh, based on existing infrastructure, using local resources, based on local cultural traditions. So in that way, uh, I, I, I'm a bit skeptical about the, the uh, success. Of yes, course, I can, I can clearly, I can clearly uh, see that. So Taha, the Crown Prince says he wants the city to home Saudi citizens as well as our foreigners. What impact could that have on the uh, Saudi society and uh, would new laws and regulations need to be passed uh, to accommodate the millions of uh, foreign residents that are, who are likely to live there? Sure. So uh, the, the Saudis have said this is a, a completely autonomous zone. Um, it has nothing to do with, with the Saudi proper as far as laws, um, as far as uh, administrative uh, rules. Uh, it'll have its own justice system. It'll have its own uh, local ordinances, etc. So that's that's the um, that's one of the the ways that uh, they're saying this, it's going to be a free trade zone. It's going to be it's going to be all these things that uh, that uh, expats would want. Frankly, mm -hmm. I, I, like I said, it's it, it's 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 uh, it's supposed to be another Dubai is 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 the point here. And so um, they're saying it's not going to be like Saudi uh, proper, like the mainland. It's going to be some, this, this different area. So can they implement that? That in and out, in, uh, in and of itself is a huge. Uh, task yes. to be able to uh, uh, to accomplish. Um, so uh, we'll see if they're if they're going to be successful in doing that. Uh, we'll still have at least twenty or fifty years to see that. So, gentlemen, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much uh, for joining me on Straight Talk.